So grade 11, so what we're going to go through now quickly is just look at the Newton's second law and how it applies to objects that are moving in a vertical direction. Okay, up until now we've looked up, uh, we've looked at horizontal motion. Everybody seems to be quite fine with that. Now we want to just have a look at the vertical motion. Okay, so example, if we have a motion of a lift, all right, an elevator. Okay, we let's make this our example a little. Let's draw a little square some sort okay that's the lift that has specific mass that we know that in the string going upwards is the force of tension well of course if the lift is going upwards there obviously is a force of gravity which is FG or weight even if the lift is coming down all right these two forces will always stay the same in other words uh, when we say when I mean stay the same the values might change but I mean they will only be those two forces they will always exist okay but now if the lift or the elevator is at rest all right or traveling at a constant velocity okay then a the resultant force acting on the lift will obviously equal zero okay so the F net will equal zero when all right um, velocity equals to zero meters per second meaning that it's at risk ah, at risk at risk um, or V which is velocity is constant all right if net will equal zero okay because there's no value okay ie your tension will equal W will equal mg Right, but if the lift is accelerating, okay. In other words, there is um, an increase in velocity. There is a change in velocity equals obviously acceleration per unit time. Okay, if this is the case, and I do say if. Okay, then. All right, then. Another color. If net is going to equal mass times acceleration. Okay? A positive value for acceleration is used if the lift is speeding up. Alright? So A will be positive. Alright? Acceleration will be positive if lift is um, velocity is increasing. Okay, I hope you all understand this little shorthand notation here. If lift V arrow up, meaning A will acceleration will be positive, it'll have a positive value if the lift is speeding up. In other words, it is increasing in speed. But A will have a negative value, alright, if the lift velocity is decreasing, i.e. it's slowing down, meaning that obviously it's decelerating. <coughs> Cool. So to put it in general formula almost, that if the lift is going downward, all right, it's going downward, there's a downward motion, all right, then we have obviously the formula if net is equal to mass times acceleration, okay, we know based on the, dr on the drawing okay just to remind you of the drawing if I draw it in a free body diagram quickly upwards was tension and downwards was weight obviously the motion is favoring the direction of this force meaning that it'll be the sum of the weight or force of gravity minus tension would give us mass times acceleration we know what weight is equal to is equal to mg minus t equals mass times acceleration all right that's how obviously with values plugged in it'll look different this is what's called general formulae if there was an upward motion how would that look it would look very similar upward motion is that we'd have I'll just break it up into another color if net is also equal to mass times acceleration but only thing now is T is positive because it is 
this force is favored, the motion is going in this direction. T minus W, mass times acceleration, which is basically tension minus mass times gravity is equal to mass times acceleration. Obviously, with our values plugged in, it'll look, it won't look like this. This is just playing with the formula and showing everybody how it will eventually look. Okay, with with respect or with regards to the different types of motion of a lift because a lift can only move up and down lift can't move sideways okay unless it's in some hectic sci-fi movie all right even if it did move sideways it would be considered a shuttle or train let's have a look at an example <clears throat> Uh, let's say, for example, we have a lift. Okay, we're going to stick with the lift with this example. All right, so we're going to stick with the lift. And we have example, and we have a lift of mass, um, let's say, 1,000 um, kilograms. Quite a heavy lift. All right, and this lift is moving upwards. So my free body diagram. All right, the lift is moving upwards. Okay, we know it has a gravitational force and slowing down at a rate of 2 meters per second. Alright, so I have acceleration is equal to negative 2 meters per second squared. So I know I said 2 meters per second just a couple of seconds ago, but acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. Why is it negative? Because the lift is moving upwards and accelerate and it is slowing down as it's moving upwards meaning acceleration is a negative value okay a person of mass 50 kilograms all right so this is mass of the lift I'll use ml and MP for mass of person is 50 kilograms <clears throat> stands on a scale in the lift the scale is calibrated in newtons calculate a tension in the lift and cable and b the reading on the scale okay well <clears throat> of course we can calculate fg and of course we can calculate what the um, value of tension is so the first question is a they want the tension oopsie not that part apart tension in cable first question they want the, they want the uh, tension in the cable so the solution for a would be of course we know if net is equal to mass times acceleration we're going to plug in straight which is t minus mg which is this part equals mass times acceleration right because the lift is moving upwards tension we don't know but we know mass times gravity we know it was uh, uh, 1000 okay 1000 um, oh excuse me I missed out one thing the mass of the lift is 1000 but the mass of the person is 50 kilograms standing in the lift so the total mass is 1050 1050 multiplied by 9,8 because this person is still part of the lift now we can't forget them all right anyway <clears throat> 1050 times 9.8 equals mass times acceleration which would be 1050 multiplied by negative 2 negative 2 because the lift is slowing down right I'm gonna come back up here just half this in half here so I end up with T minus let's just put this in on a calculator 1050 times 9.8 10,290 it's equal to 1050 um, times negative 2 which is minus 2100 oh, okay so what do we do just take him over and we end up with minus 2100 uh, plus 10,290 and therefore tension in the cable is equal to 8,190 newtons as simple as that 
Uh, B, they asked you for a different question. B, they asked us to now calculate the reading on the scale. Because remember, in the question, um, which I read to you, is that the person stood on the scale in the lift while the lift was going up. All right, so we want to know what's the reading on the scale now. So we use the same formula, uh, if net is equal to mass times acceleration, they use that same formula. And what we do is now we are looking for the reading. So let's say the reading is R, reading on the scale. Okay, it's still going upwards. So reading, because they said, uh, as I mentioned, uh, when you watch this video again, you'll hear it, that um, the scale is calibrated in newtons. In other words, it gives a newton reading, right? Not a mass in kilogram reading. So R minus mg equals ma. Now notice we've just replaced T with R. We're not calculating the tension in the lift anymore. We've done so. We want to calculate the tension in the... Um, or not the tension, but the reading on the scale in newtons. The person, MP, was 50 kilograms. All right. So reading, we don't know yet. Ah. But we know that the mass of the person was 50, and gravity is still 9,8. And that equals to mass, still the person, the lift is still going upwards and still slowing down. So still times negative 2. Alright. So let's calculate it quickly. 50 times 9.8. Uh, 490. So if R minus 490 equals 50 times negative 2, which we know is negative 100. Alright. And if we swap that over, we'll get minus 100 plus 490. Therefore, the reading on the scale, all right, because the reading on the scale will vary depending on how hard the floor of the lift presses up on the scale, all right? So the force will be shown as the reading, all right, R, okay? And um, that would be a force, uh, uh, well, not a force really, but the reading on the scale calibrated in newtons would be 390 newtons. Uh, because um, if we have um, a little uh, square here and let's picture this as the lift okay I know I drew it a bit longer which is perfectly fine there we go if we have a little scale here which I'll draw in another color so let's say there's a scale okay so I'll just shade in quickly cool and then a person, <coughs> okay, decides to stand on it. Okay, it's very, I think, excellent joint skills. Okay, decides to draw, uh, decides to stand on it. Remember, we've got the weight pushing downwards, which is mass times gravity, which is equal to 490 uh, newtons we found out to be over here okay and the person's mass was 50 kilograms okay so like I said the reading on the scale will vary depending on how hard the lift floor pushes up on the scale so the reading therefore is going to go this way that's why it's still positive hence we have uh, worked it out to be 390 newtons all right that 50 kilograms is in fact about 390 newtons um, in a lift, all right? Because we still got to take away the acceleration of the lift that is still going upwards, but would probably be 490 newtons if you were standing on a flat surface without moving. And that wraps up our little session for uh, today on um, especially Newton's second law in vertical motion as it's very important grade 11s as it carries through all the way to grade 12 where um, we combine actually questions of horizontal and vertical motion and it's such an important uh, topic um, for your grade 11 and your grade 12 uh, physical science paper one question so really focus on it uh, learn it well 
uh, practice as many questions as you can uh, from textbooks or, um, or past papers and um, really make sure you know it well as it carries through all the way to grade 12. Stay tuned for the next um, video tutorial where we will go through Newton's third law as well as his fourth law which is Newton's universal law of gravitation.